everybody, welcome to the Me Time Gamer Podcast, episode number 5. I'm Jonathan Fournier, your host for this episode like every other episode. Uh, hopefully you guys are going well. Thank you for listening to podcasts. If it's your world, if your first time, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. So we'll we'll go straight straight forward this week, and we'll start with the new releases for uh, the week of February 10th. Uh, our first game, and uh, probably a good way, a lot of people waiting are waiting for this one is Evolve coming to PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, if you're not sure, you can go s- if if you want to read up a bit on it. I got uh, my impressions on Evolve that I read a couple weeks ago, on um, episode three. You can see the the written one if you if you haven't already. Uh, it's not too bad of a game if you if you feel like playing it. Go give go give it a try. But like I said in uh, like I stated when uh, about in that article that I that I posted, it's I don't see it being a repeatable kind of game, but. If it's your kind of game, go try it out. It's a fun multiplayer game. If you got friends and if you communicate, so yeah, go go give that a try. Uh, next game is uh, Unmechanical Extended Edition, coming to uh, Xbox uh, Xbox One, PS4, PS3, and I think the 360. I'm wasn't. Sh- I'm not sure. I heard it was, but it. Couldn't find a detail on it, so let's say it is coming on to Xbox 360 for now, and if it's not, well, it's not. Uh, next game is uh, Paparazzi, coming out for Wii U. After that, we got Ace Combat Assault Horizon Legacy Plus for 3DS. Next, again for the 3DS, we got Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Uh, and the last one coming out next week, which I was able to find, is The Legend of Zelda Majora's Max 3D coming for the 3DS. If you guys haven't played it, uh, well, I haven't played it since the original one on the, the 64, and I, I really liked it back then. Was was never able to uh, was never able to beat the game. But, uh, oh, I was missing like one or two masks at the end there, but it's a really fun concept when it came out, and probably still is, it's probably a, little, a lot different on a smaller screen, but I won't be able to play because I don't own a, th- a 3DS, but hopefully if you guys try it out, uh, if you want to write in to tell tell me what you guys think about it, sure, and why not, um, and that's it for the new releases this week, so uh, we'll go straight on to This Week in News. <laughs> So the first article up, up on the docket is the PS Plus games out this week, uh, since Tuesday. Uh, so what you can get on the PS4, uh, you can get a Pathion, uh, which is sort of a, it looks a lot, it's a, a Greek-Roman-like type game, a side-scroller uh, kind of game. Uh, you get Transistor. Transistor was a really good uh game last year, so if you guys want to check that out for the PS4. Uh, for the PS3, we have Thief, which I... That, that game got a lot of crap uh, when it came out, uh, but I, I platinum it on the PS4, and I really enjoyed it when it came out, so if you want to grab it for free on the PS3, it's always a good option. Um, yeah, there is some audio mishaps and a couple little things that bothered me, but... Um, the game is still very, very fun to play. Like if you like, if you like a lot of stealth and stuff like that, it's still a fun game. So there's a, also what, what's fun with Thief is you get like you can adjust the level of how hard the game is. So that's always fun. Uh, yeah, so g- give that one a try if you haven't. Um, the next one is uh, for PS3 still is Yakuza 4. Uh, I've never played uh, personally. I never played the Yakuza f- myself. So. Uh, so I don't have a lot of information on that one, but uh, if you if you like that that game, it's it's available for PS3 free. I'm I'm I, if I have the chance, I might try it. Um, for the for the PS Vita now, you got Kick and Finnick, which is sort of a I would say an isometric uh, looking kind of game with a it has a nice art style for what I saw from the, the trailers and stuff like that. Um, uh, yeah, so go go f- check the trailer. We I got the uh, all the sorry, I should say this at the beginning every time, but I always keep forgetting. Uh, every, all, all for the first uh, three news articles. 
yeah, for the first three news articles I'm going to mention, you can find the articles on metimegamer.com. Uh, yeah, so you can, uh, if you find the, the PS, Plus, PS Plus free games for February, you'll find the PS Plus tr- uh, for game for February trailer. So check that out. You'll see what uh, Kick and Fennec is. The last game for uh, PS Vita is actually Rogue Legacy. I heard a lot of good things about this game. A lot of people like it because it has like a uh, you play. You, you, I'm not. I'm. I'm not sure what the art style looks like, but um, basically, when you die, what's fun about this game is when you die, it's sort of your relative that takes over uh, for you, and each time you die. You, some of your abilities are some of your abilities are transferred to the next character. That's what I heard of the game. I've never had a chance to try it yet. And what's nice about Rogue Legacy is it's on P, uh, PS Vita, but you can also get it on the PS4 and PS3. So uh, yeah, if you if you guys uh, get a chance to check that out, check out those games. They look pretty awesome. And yeah, so you got until the end of the month. Uh, so yeah, that's all for uh, for the PS Plus games. Next one is uh, Battlefield Hardline Beta. So, I know it's the middle of the week and it's half more than halfway done here. So, so if you didn't hear, uh, Battlefield Hardline had an, or is having an open beta right now uh, from February 3rd to February 8th. So, uh, if you guys uh, feel like trying that out, it's available on the PS4, PS3, Xbox One, and Xbox 360. If you're in Japan, you can play right now, but you, it started on February 4th. For the PS4 and the PS3, so once again, there's a there's a trailer you can go see uh, on uh, on metimegamer.com if you want to see the it's a five five and a half minute trailer. Uh, so if you if you feel like playing the game, the the, the beta will give you access to three different multiplayer maps and uh, three different modes. First mode is hardware that that has uh, criminal. Uh, Stealing a list of marked cars and cops trying to repossess the, the same cars. Uh, you'll be able to play it in two different maps. The one, the first map is downtown and the other one is Dust Bowl. Uh, the only thing is... Uh, the only thing you're going to have to be working really hard in team and you have to have be a really good driver for, uh, for, uh, for uh, hot, hot Wire. Uh, the next one is the ever popular uh, conquest mode from uh, from previous Battlefield games. Uh, it would be a, there's only going to be one map for that one. It's the Dust Bowl map, and it's going to support up to 64 players. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so joining these two modes is a heist mode, actually. Um, it's uh, this one's going to be only on the bank job map. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. It's uh, you play as the robber, or you play as the cop, pretty much. Uh, Steal the bank and stuff like that. Uh, one cool, uh, well, cool, one cool other detail that that is available uh, for, um, uh, for on the on the beta is uh, if you like the commander mode on the Battlefield 4, you'll be able to play. Uh, they they swapped it up and now it's called hacker mode, which lets player control the environment around them and set traps. Uh, this mode will also be available on this this uh, mode will be av- available of on all console. Um, on all, sorry, on all modes, uh, and if, if actually, uh, speaking of Battlefield 4, if, uh, if you're, if you're still playing Battlefield 4 and you, you play the, the beta, actually you'll unlock a dog tag you're going to be able to be able to use on the, um, on Battlefield 4, basically, so that's pretty fun. Um, so, uh, for the beta, the, it's a, it's a 10 to 11 gig download, it, I downloaded it on my PS4. It didn't take it too long, so uh, so yeah, it's an 11 to 10, it's an 11 gig download for PC, PS4, and Xbox One. For old older gen console, um, it's a it will, it's a four gig download, so a, bit, a lot smaller. Uh, what's fun? By now, you should already play it if you're playing it. Uh, if I, if you're playing it on PC, you get it from Origin, and it, you could act you you could have actually pre downloaded pre downloaded it on February second. Uh, yeah, and uh, also a small little detail, if, um, so the, so like I said, you can play 64 players on Conquest, uh, on the, on the newer gen consoles, and 32 players for the two other modes, the only little thing is on Xbox 360 and PS3, um, you know, there's only 24 players on all modes, so, uh, you can see where, uh, 
or the difference between con uh, gen old gen and new gen takes this. Uh, what's nice also, the last little, um, the last, last little detail about this is uh, there's actually no level cap, uh, so you can keep playing how much you want. You can play 24 hours a day, and you can get to whatever maximum level, and the, the game will allow you. It's just the only thing you have to keep in mind is your game does not, the progression, the, the progression does not transfer to when the game comes out on March uh, 17th. Yeah, so um, looking at the trailer, uh, I really like where I really enjoyed Battlefield 4. I still have it here. Uh, I used to be I used to be a call, more of a Call of Duty guy, but once I tried Battlefield 4, I really there was no looking back. Like probably some of you guys are gonna hate me for this, but I really enjoy Battlefield a lot more, and I really can't wait to try the the beta. Uh, it's probably gonna be my uh, my ping of the week for next week once I get a chance to play it. Uh, I really like the modes that they're introducing in the beta, so I can't wait to try that out. Uh, in the in the trailer on this side, you can actually see that the, the story does look interesting. The the single uh, player campaign story actually looks very interesting, and uh, yeah, so um, I'll, ch uh, I'll I'll definitely be checking that out. And uh, yeah, that's it for the beta. For talking about the beta this week, uh, the other little piece of news that I had was uh, a new game was announced called White White Knight. So if you're not sure what White Knight is, it's actually a um, it's a it's a survival horror game, and it's it's really cool. If you have a chance, go look at the at at the uh, at the trailer. Uh, go look uh, go look at the trailer on our website. Uh, it's a black and white uh, style film noir kind of style. The game takes place in uh, 1930s in Boston. You play in a mansion, and you have to. Uh, you have to solve puzzle, um, sort of lights and shadow puzzle, and c the main thing. What, what's cool about the game is when you when you look at the trailer is the main focus is the only method you can see is with matches, and you have to collect these matches to keep moving on and solve puzzles and stuff like that. Uh, this game is developed by uh, uh, Ozone Studio, and it's published by Activision. And you, if uh, if you own a PS4, Xbox One, or PC, you'll be able to pick it up on my, uh, March 3rd. So uh, that's coming up pretty soon. Um, like I said, the art style is pretty pretty fun. I'm probably going to try to pick it up. It's probably not a long game, but it it looks actually pretty interesting. Just the just the art style of it and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so you guys can go uh, check that out. Um, yeah, you guys can go check that out on the website, the trailer. It looks pretty cool. Uh, small, uh, some, a little bit smaller detail in news. In the news, uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare Havoc DLC. Uh, PS4 and PS3 finally got an announced it because the, if you remember a couple a uh, couple sh weeks ago, uh, was an article that I posted and I talked about on the on that week's uh, podcast that uh, Xbox One was getting the, it on. January 27th, but now PS4 and PS3 are actually get in, getting DLC on February 26th, so if you guys are big Advanced Warfare players, you'll finally get the DLCs, you can go check the Advanced Warfare, um, I'll link it in the article for the podcast there, that you can go see the article, that I, the information, what's coming out in that DLC, there's the uh, Exo Zombie, which is, looks pretty cool, they're pretty, they look pretty badass uh, zombies this time around, so... Um, yeah, that's it for Call of Duty news. Uh, one little detail that I actually found on Facebook was actually, uh, I found some details about Elder Scrolls Online, and, uh, when I announced that news a couple weeks ago, uh, they were talking about a crown store where, because now there's no more subscription in the game, uh, you're gonna be able to, um, uh, purchase, um, purchase item like there's no subscription but you can there there isn't a mandatory subscription anymore but you can still buy so there isn't any mandatory uh, subscription in uh, Elder Scrolls Online anymore so you can uh, uh, you can have a, you can buy a subscription anyway but this is this one gives you actually crowns which is sort of a in-game currency that lets you buy like special stuff so I was able to uh, on their Facebook page, they actually link to a, a site called uh, DeltiaGaming.com. So if you guys want to go check out, it's uh, D-E-L-T-I-A-S Gaming.com. So he was talking about it in this video, showing a bit what the store was made up of and what 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 was in store and stuff like that. So for the general stuff, general information about it is uh, there's a. It's actually a more of a he was uh, was able to. It was more like a. Uh, 
of a test or beta test of the of the the crown store so uh, what 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 he could uh, what he was able to show is that uh, there's five categories of stuff you can buy from which are uh, bundles with like pretty self explanatory uh, consumables which um or the yeah so you can buy consumables uh, which the the way he actually showed it in the video where it won't don't really have a greater effect than the than just your standard stuff you pick up in the game you have costumes uh he was explaining also on the costume that they actually look pretty pretty cool and he showed it in the video they actually look pretty cool uh you get mounts and pets uh so that's pretty cool and what's nice about all the stuff you buy he, he was more talking about the costume but i think also that everything you buy is a count bound so if you have multiple characters all your characters can use it so that's pretty cool detail about that uh and they were talking about uh the the subscription you can buy if you feel like it is uh fifteen dollars for thirty days so it's sort of like what you paid when you had the mandatory subscription but this time it's it's not it's not mandatory so if you guys want to try that out when when you buy the thirty days you get the fifteen hundred crowns so uh and if if I remember the article you do get uh you get about five hundred when you get the game to give you a s small sample of what's coming up and you get all the DLCs with the with the subscription and stuff like that and you can still buy them without but you just have to pay for all of them instead of having the $15 a month so that's it for this week in news so I didn't uh, I didn't play a lot of games I played a lot of um, I actually reviewed uh, I got a chance to review Life is Strange episode 1 which I'll talk about a bit later um uh and also I played a lot of uh, Sunset Overdrive which was uh I'm still still getting used to the control in that game but it's still it's still fun just grinding around and killing those ODs all the time and story is pretty fun I don't I don't know if it's just because I'm not following the story that well or something like that but I find that the story is un really unrelevant to what I'm doing most of the time like I said I don't know if it's just because I'm not following it or something like that but Maybe it's just because it's not that interesting of a story, but anyway, that's just my opinion. Uh, yeah, so I played that for now. That's about it for what I played. I didn't get a chance. I was pretty busy this weekend, so uh, yeah, that's it. So, so let's move on for let's go. Let's move on to the ping of the week. All right, so every week I choose a subject and I give my opinion on it. Uh, and you guys can write in, uh, give your two cents on if you feel like it. This week, uh, I'll actually talk about uh, actually uh, talk about Life is Strange episode one. Uh, I'll get I'll just basically uh, tell you what I thought about the game, basically my review about the game. So Life is Strange for episode one is goes by the name uh, Chrysalis. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I'm sorry if I'm not. Uh, so for general details on the game. Uh, it's available on PS4, PS3, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC. First episode was released last week on Friday, January 30th. Um, the devel uh, it's developed by uh, Don't Not Entertainment. It's published by Square Enix. It's a graphic adventure, so it's not super action-oriented. It's more like uh, uh, story-driven a lot, which is pretty cool. Well, anyway, you'll see... Uh, uh, it's an M-rated game because there's a lot of swearing and reference to drugs and a couple stuff like that. So you, you'll see uh, if ever you play it. It's, it's only single player and you can only download it. I don't know if they're going to do a, once all the five episodes are out, I don't know if they're going to do like a CD version like uh, Walking Dead did. So um, I was able, for this game I was actually able, it's a review copy sent by Square Enix, uh, re Xbox One copy. So yeah, if you followed the site you really saw I was interesting in the, in, interested in the game. So uh, let's start with the story. Well, basically the story is you play as Max, a new photography student at Blackwell Academy in Arcadia Bay, Oregon. Uh, after five years of living in Seattle, she's back in her hometown to learn more about her passion from a, one of her favorite photographers presently teaching at her new school. She discovers the ability to rewind time that, that which, is now, which is now bestowed upon her and helps Max save the life of her friend unknown to her at this crossroad in time. She then she's then reunited with that friend Chloe Price, 
a bit later and starts their adventure that will, in future episodes, test their limits and friendship. With her newfound power, Max can use the ability to solve puzzles, get clues to the right answers in conversation, and much more. Um, the game is built from the ground up for the story, and it delivers on all the line. I immediately felt felt emerge, immersed uh, right from the beginning with the characters and voice acting. Every person you interact with, or even Max herself, feels genuine and involved in what's happening. I, I, en I enjoy a good story, although the first episode is more of a prep for future ones. The game is still captivating, it still, captiva still captivates the player. Um, the rewind power is a, is a nice touch that changes the ty this type of game's general feeling when looking at past iteration of this genre. Gen gen type of games. Sorry, I can't say it for some reason today. Uh, you might feel a bit underwhelmed by the power because you don't immediately feel the impact of most decisions. This is quite the opposite. The one thing that Life is Train does very well is making you double-guess yourself after, uh, after uh, an important decision. It plays a small s song snippet that imposes a tone to the event, making you reconsider your choice. A little funny thing about this, also Max even inputs a small inner thought that most of the time seems like she's thinking twice about the way the conversation or event has unraveled, in consequent giving you that same feeling. This is why the rewind power is actually well done and doesn't feel like you have full power of the situation. For the visuals, uh, Life and Strangers offers a balance when it comes to the style of, of the game. On one hand, we get a sense of realism from the character designs, which it makes it look a very, uh, which uh, makes it look like a very nice weekly television show, animated television show, but really like well drawn. And uh, on the other hand, you get a uh, what I found what I found a very a slight comedic strip like design to it, um, like in the outline of the art objects, and Arcadia's population, the general character design and stuff like that. Uh, there's a nice attention to detail when it comes to each little item. It gives you the world a nice vibrant feeling from the like from the posters in the school to the trees moving in the wind. Uh, there's one thing that did catch my eye when I was playing on the Xbox One is the auto the audio seems out of sync with the character's mouth for, and sometimes the NPC or the protagonist have barely moving mouth when talking. Um, this might be a bit of a mood breaking at times because I didn't notice it a lot when I was playing that it was out of sync a lot, but the the visuals and the gameplay actually makes up for it a lot. So it, it did lose a couple points on that one, which I don't really. <laughs> you'll you'll I, I'm not a big fan of giving points for uh, reviews, but I go with it. Usually when I review stuff, I give what I feel the game deserves comparing to other games and that. Ju Basically, what the game, what I feel about the game is, and what other games that look somewhat like it uh, was like. So, if you guys, if that makes any sense to you guys, um, all right. So, another big feature of this game is the puzzles. Uh, the, basically, that's there's no action in this game, so puzzle is the most important aspect of the game, pretty much. Uh, episode one of Life of Trains has only a couple of puzzles, which are either pretty easy or straight up give. Or what? What's a little sad? It almost in episode one, it almost gives straight up gives you the answer to if you get it wrong the first time. Uh, I'll give Don't Not a pass on episode one because it's the introduction to the game, which was stated in the in the in the paper they 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 send with the review copy. They actually say like episode one is an introduction uh, uh, episode for future installments. So I didn't expect to be bombarded with difficult situations in this case. Um, the most obvious, uh, the most obvious one that, like, when the answer was given to me at one point, uh, was when I was going to grab something. It was high on a cabinet, and when reaching for it, while well, the item falls on the floor behind something else, immediately the game, the game almost in my opinion, tells you what to do, which is, unlike other puzzles, don't present any challenge, really. Because um, what happens, like I said, I was reaching for something in the game, and the, th the thing fell down, and immediately showed me, oh, well, you should have done this before, or stuff like that. Well, I, I wish I had the opportunity to try to figure it out before you told me, but that's unfortunate. I, I'm ho I, I, really ho I really hope that next for the next episode, I'll actually... Um, 
a bit harder and they, they won't hold your hand as much as episode one. But like I said, it's an introduction to the game. So it was showing you like what they're trying to do with the puzzle features and stuff like that. So another another part, because uh, to keep you interested in the game, there's actually collectibles to find the episode. For episode one, it features one type of collectible. I don't know if they're going to introduce some in future episodes, which would be nice, because the, the game took me about three hours to complete it in one sitting, so it wasn't that bad, and that's with all the collectibles and almost doing everything in the game. It took me about three hours. Um, so for episode one, uh, when you interact, uh, with the world itself, uh, you can move, change, or activate an event that will create photo opportunities, which are then posted in Max Journal because ma- all the options and menus are in Max's journal to make it more realistic and part in the game. Um, there, are, there, are, the 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 photo opportunities are not always in plain sight. You have to. St- There's a couple of them that I have to. I had to go back and redo. Uh, like when I was done the game, I had to go back into chapters and uh, and uh, try to get them. Uh, the, the game does give you a small hint when you go look in the journal. There's actually uh, white pictures. If you go look at the review on the website, you can see exactly what I mean. The picture that I took, uh, that I captured, you can actually go see. It's like a drawing of the picture you're looking for for that spot, which is pretty nice. Keep in mind, it's not exactly what the picture is going to look like at the end, but it's pretty close. You get a pretty good hint. Uh, the game does help you with a nice little feature when you go back to find the collectibles. Um, when you select a uh, chapter, you can select uh, the option to start a coll- uh, start in collectible mode, which doesn't affect the decision you m- you made when playing through the first time. Uh, even if you you redo an event or choose a different outcome, so that means like if you if you're in collectible mode and let's say you completely do something different and talking to somebody else, well, it won't change. Uh, I enjoyed it, actually, because it's fun. You don't have to worry about those things. And um, also a nice little feature in that is when you're actually selecting a chapter, is actually tell uh, the chapter of that episode, uh, under each chapter, it actually indicates how many picture, how many uh, photo opportunities or picture there is to take in that chapter and how much you actually have taken all of those, so it's actually narrows it down for you where you have to go and stuff like that. So that's pretty nice. So uh, for the audio-wise, uh, are you really get the feeling that the music and voice acting was done right. Uh, and this type of game, where the story is key, voice acting and the soundtrack are critical to the success of the game. Uh, Life is Strange does, does both superbly. Uh, the soundtrack, which you can go, uh, if you go on the article, you can see, uh, you can get the links to, uh, you can hear the entire soundtrack on YouTube and Spotify. It's a very pleasant mix of tracks that encompasses all the moods created in the game. Uh, the end of the first episode really has a great feeling because it, the the the, the end of the first episode, sorry, uh, the, it, because of this, uh, of the soundtrack, the end of the first episode really has a great feeling uh, to it and it, uh, and it sets a nice tone for the next episode. Uh, while well, actually, while I was writing my review, I was actually listening to the to the soundtrack on Spotify. So uh, just to, so if you guys want to listen to that, just go look at the artic- the uh, review article. Uh, go to you can go to metimegamer dot com. Uh, click on the video game review. Click on the the link for the the review. And you can click on the links there to check out the YouTube and Spotify to go uh, check out the soundtrack. I really recommend it if you like uh, smooth music. It's really nice. Uh, for the voice acting, uh, in this case, uh, Maxine is, playing, is played by Hannah Tell. And uh, Chloe is played by Ashley Birch. Uh, they're, they're really well executed, ex- executed and they feel really natural in context. Uh, in this case, like Max is a shy girl, and the voice actress portrays that really well. Person- personally, I never felt like some characters' voice didn't go with what they, what action they were performing. If one of the NPCs was a bit crazy, the voice followed, and it was believable. Uh, for my final th- thoughts on the game, if like if you haven't if you haven't your- made up your mind on Life is Strange, I highly recommend trying it out. Although the game isn't wall-to-wall action, the game offers a spectacular story and mix, mixed with excellent voice acting and music. The, vil- the visuals are very enjoyable to look at, even if with the small, uh, the, uh, with small out-of-sync voice-to-character aspect. 
but you'll you really won't be disappointed for so for uh, Life is Strange episode 1 I gave a score of 8.5 out of 10 which it, it deserves it. it's a really good game so yeah you can go check that out all right so so this week I'm actually introducing a new a new segment called uh, kickstarting it So basically, kickstarting it uh, is a weekly article that, that features a selected game from Kickstarter or similar websites. Each week, one game is selected from these sites and is featured in, in the article and that week's. So this, so the podcast of the week I choose. Uh, the article and podcast and podcast will be released at the same time. Uh, I will give a rundown on the game of the game and any necessary information concerning the game. The article or podcast will feature, if the de- developer uh, participates, a small item from the developer. So I hope you guys will enjoy the new segment. It's a give, give a push to uh, small games on Kickstarter and stuff like that. Uh, I really find it important that uh, small games like that do push, because a, a lot of games, like if you just think like Minecraft and stuff like that, how these guys were just small indie devs, and you see how, how much like Minecraft exploded after a while. So... So yeah, if so, if the gif of it is uh, at the same time I release the podcast. I'll put I'll put out the article with all the necessary information. I'll give I'll give a rundown right now too, so you guys can um, check that out. So the first the first game I'll choose for the first ever uh, kickstarting it is, is a game called Orphan. It's uh, developed by Windy Hill Studio. So at this point, from uh, February fifth, uh, they have two hundred and one backers. Uh, they're looking for uh, thirty-two thousand dollars. So so far, right now, they have collected uh, five thousand four hundred ninety-nine dollars uh, for, for uh, as of uh, February fifth. Uh, their funding ends on Tuesday, March third, at uh, twelve a.m. Eastern time. And uh, the platform that the game is coming to is PC, Mac, and PS4. Do keep in mind, PS4 is a stretch goal of thirty-six thousand dollars. If they reach Basically, if they reach thirty-six thousand dollars, we get a PS PS4 edition. So, hopefully, we can all get on that and um, get it up to that point. It would be really fun to get on the PS4. So, on the page, I, I got a link for the Kickstarter page and the website. If you guys want to check that out, there's also uh, the uh, video for you guys to check that out. Also, if you uh, if you want to see it in action. So basically, Orphan is a 2D platformer inspired by games like Another World, Blackthorn, and Odd World, Abe's Odyssey. In a world where you, you play as a little boy, are probably the only human left, you must travel far and wide to find answer, answers and destroy the invading machine army. You must find their weaknesses and use it against them to get rid of them once and for all. You face the mighty terrain of the Appalachian lands, going over mountain caves, caves and valleys. The key feature in Orphan is stealth. The invaders can kill you pretty easily if spotted. Shown in the presentation video, uh, you will be able to hide behind rocks to help you along the way. Um, you also collect items and gain abilities to help you on your journey. So I really recommend, like my, my description is not uh, everything that encompasses it. Uh, but you can go check out the, the video. He does explain, I don't, I don't, I don't know the, the, the name of the person that... Uh, that does the video, but um, you guys can go check it out. It's really uh, well explained what the game is and the the art style. Basically, Orphan. What really caught my curiosity with the is the art style. Uh, it, it looks a lot like Limbo, but like uh, but like w- the art style really has that incognito feel to the character, and uh, that's really what caught my attention. Is really the the, the art style of it. Uh, so if you guys want to check it out, go check out their Kickstarter page, and uh, help them out, it's a really fun, uh, it looks like a really fun little game that I hopefully will have a chance to try, um, and if you, if you would like to get your, your game to be featured on Kickstarting it, please send us an email at contact at metimegamer.com, the only thing you have to do is, uh, you can link your Kickstarter page, and in the email uh, subject line, just say Kickstarting it requests. And I'll know immediately what you guys mean. Yeah, that's it for that article. So, uh, so that's it for this week. Uh, thanks to Techno Axe Royalty Free Music for the intro and outro music. 
Uh, also to thank uh, Mansardian and Unfa for the, the weekend news intro and ping of the week intro. You can find them at freesound.org. Uh, I'd also like to mention the affiliates. Uh, if you'd like to help the website out, uh, uh, you can check out our affiliates. Got Amazon affiliates you can check out for the states and Canada. Uh, you can check out g2a.com where you can find uh, most a lot of their st- stuff is uh, Steam codes, uh, global Steam codes, uh, pretty good everywhere. They got pretty good games, uh, pretty good games, pretty good deals. When the Steam's not having their crazy deals, you can find G2A has pretty good deals on, and they even got a, a PS Plus cards uh, and uh, Xbox uh, Gold subscription too. Uh, you can go to also another of our one of our affiliate is uh, PlayAsia.com. So it's play-asia.com. If you go check them out, they got a lot of cool games, and they also have uh, there's I think one of their specialties is uh, 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 Asian games that haven't come to North America. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, the other one is Thing Geek. If you want to your your geeky hardwares, you can go go look at uh, Thing Geek. Uh, also, another one of my uh, one of my favorite affiliates is T Fury. T Fury has um, a daily, each 24-hour period, they get a new t-shirt design from the community or their in-house uh, artists. Um, it's anything from game, movies, anything you can think of, references to different kind of stuff, mishmash of uh, different different things. So they're pretty cool. I got a lot of them. Uh, so you guys can go check out our affiliate uh, page. Uh, Me Time Digger... Yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention that the... Uh, all our affiliates, you can go to metimegamer.com forward slash affiliates to check them all out. Uh, you can also check out the Uplay Store affiliate link. And, uh, our last affiliate, actually, this one uh, is also an iTunes affiliate where you can... Th- this one, yeah, you can go to f- our affiliate page, uh, click on the iTunes link. It's actually... Uh, it actually links up I- immediately to uh, our... Uh, to our iTunes page for the podcast, but then from there you can travel and buy stuff on iTunes if you feel like it. Uh, you can find the podcast at uh, Stitcher, I, uh, TuneIn, iTunes, and Audio Mac. Um, if you guys have anything uh, to say, like comments, suggestions, critiques, questions, uh, topics for Ping of the Weeks, or like I mentioned, uh, if you want to suggest a King, uh, Kickstarter uh, game, uh, you can send that request to uh, podcast at metimegamer.com. If you'd like to plas- uh, place an, an ad on the podcast, you can do that to contact at uh, metimegamer.com. If you would like to follow metimegamer.com, you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash metimegamer, all one word. On Twitter, at metimegamer, all one word. Uh, YouTube, you can find us on youtube.com forward slash user forward slash metimegamer. Uh, Twitch. Uh, this weekend, I'll try. I'll try to uh, do some. Uh, I'll be getting Dying Light tomorrow, and I'll be doing some uh, Battlefield Hardline beta. So you can check us out on Twitch. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash Me Time Gamer. So I'll be doing that uh, pretty much this weekend. And uh, you can also check my articles out at GambitCom.com, where they specialize in. Uh, game, um, uh, movies, TV shows, anime, and many more stuff, so go check that out. So I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, uh, Hopefully everything goes well. Keep on gaming, and see you next week, guys. (laughs) 